This Elden Ring series covers how to do all quests and missable content in order so that all choices and rewards will be available. For best results, follow this series from the start of part 1. There will be spoilers in the form of important information and as usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. At the end of part 7, we had just ventured through the Hallow Tree, completing the quest lines for both Dung Eater and Millicent before setting fire to the Ur Tree and sending ourselves to the crumbling Fair Missoula. In part 8, we will be completing any remaining quests and tasks before beating the game. I'll explain this first part as we make our way to and through the Death Touched Catacombs, which is to the northeast of the Saints Bridge Site of Grace and is the first relevant location. There is an NPC we've sort of forgotten about in this guide, it's Gronk the Beast Clergyman. His questline consists of collecting the nine death roots scattered throughout the lands between and bringing them to him. This can be done at any time, however, if you do it before meeting Malekith at the crumbling fair Missoula, you'll get just a single line of unique dialogue. It's fairly trivial overall, but I couldn't call this an ultimate guide if I didn't cover it. This catacombs is very straightforward, run to the end and pull the lever, then return to the boss room near the entrance to fight a weakened black knife assassin. It will drop the assassin's crimson dagger when defeated, and you can loot the death root from the chest nearby. This is actually the second death route we've gotten. If you remember, the first was obtained early on by defeating the Tibia Mariner near Summon Water Village. Since we've already gotten that, we will move on to the next death route. Find the Tibia Mariner near the cliffside tombstones that lead down to Jarburg. It will drop the skeletal bandit ashes along with a death route when defeated. Next, head back to the Black Knife Catacombs. We probably could have done this the first time we were here, but better late than never. Retrace your steps from last time until after using the guillotine traps to reach the upper level. This time, find the chute on the right side of the hallway behind the skeleton archer. This will lead down to a pit where the lever for the boss door is located. Make your way out of the pit and back through the guillotine room to get to the boss room. There, you'll need to face off with a very weak cemetery shade, which will drop the Twin Sage Sorcerer ashes when defeated, and the fourth death root can be picked up from a nearby chest. Moving further north, we will get our fifth death route from another Tibia Mariner. This one is located to the southeast of the Seathwater River in the lower area of Windham Ruins. It will drop the Tibia's Summon Sorcery along with a death route when defeated. We'll have to visit the Gelmir Hero's Grave for the next death route. Travel west from the first Mount Gelmir campsite past the Siege Tower then move south until coming upon the entrance to this dungeon. While the Raptor of the Mists Ash of War is very handy for dealing with the chariots and dungeons, in this one I think the Bloodhound step is more than sufficient. Starting down the first ramp, quickly sprint and jump to the first safe area where the Skeletal Archer is located. Once the chariot begins back down the ramp, chase after it and slip into the next safe spot near another pesky skeleton. As soon as the chariot passes by, continue down the ramp using Bloodhound Step to quickly glide through the lava. This will get you out of the danger zone from the chariot. Let's round up all the unique items in this location as we make our way through. The first is the Ringed Finger Weapon, it's in a chamber to the south at the bottom of the ramp. After grabbing it, dash your way across the lava to a secret chute and safely drop down. You can push open the boss doors here, then head inside to face off with the Red Wolf of the Champion. It's fairly easy and will drop the Bloodhound Knight Flow Ashes when defeated. Instead of teleporting out of the dungeon, grab the Death Root from the chest, then double back and return to the boss room entrance. 
A chariot travels up and down the nearby ramp, and you can actually sprint jump to land on it, then ride it to the top of the ramp. The nearby cemetery shade will drop the mantis blade the first time it's defeated. Grab it, then drop down to a hidden area nearby. Make your way through to find a Bloodhound Knight guarding a body. When defeated, it will drop the Bloodhound Knight armor set, and you can also pick up the Gelmir armor set nearby. While there is still a Stone Sword key in this dungeon, we won't worry about that. Instead, we'll head to our next destination, Giant's Mountaintop Catacombs. The closest site of grace is Zammer Ruins. From there, make your way north to the Enormous Bridge. Instead of crossing the bridge, turn to the southeast to find a short path leading directly to the catacombs. From the site of Grace, make your way down and turn down the hallway to the north, leading to the first lift. This is a fairly confusing dungeon with a whole optional section hidden beneath the first lift. We will just be focusing on getting the death route, but feel free to explore and get confused on your own time. Make your way past the boss doors to reach a second lift, and this is the really confusing part where the dungeon tries to play tricks on your mind. Head south down the first hall, then turn towards the west of the first juncture and move in that direction, sidestepping pressure plates along the way. Turn east right after passing the explosive jar enemies and carry onward. After passing the poison enemies, there will be a chute to the west of a pressure plate. It will be a short drop and take you to what appears to be the same room. But it's a trick. This is actually a room that we've never been to before. Turn to the north and locate what is actually a new lift. Activate it and quickly step off. You'll need to drop down beneath it, then move south to reach the lever that opens the boss room doors. Afterwards, drop down and head down the south hall to get back to the original lift that we took down to this confusing area. The lift will take you back to the boss room doors, which are now open. Inside, you'll need to face off with an ulcerated tree spirit, and it should be easy when compared to other challenges we've already faced. It will drop the Glove Wart Picker's Bell Bearing 2 when defeated, and you can get the 7th Death Root from the chest nearby. The 8th Death Root is obtained from the Tibia Mariner, tucked away on a ledge to the northwest of the Snow Valley Ruins Overlook. It will drop the Help and Steeple and a Death Root when defeated. For the final Death Root, travel to the Grand Lift of Rolt and use the Secret Medallion to reach the entrance to the hidden path to the Hallow Tree. There is a broken ledge that you'll need to carefully walk off of to reach an invisible pathway below. Immediately to the south is the entrance to a hallway. At the end of that hallway, there is a false wall that will fade when rolled into. Behind it, you'll find the very valuable Silver Scarab Talisman. Double back down the hall and back out onto the invisible walkway. Line yourself up with the opening on the opposite side of the chamber and move forward. Before reaching it though, turn west and spot another chamber opening. Line yourself up with that opening and then move in that direction, safely leaping to the platform below. Go through one of the two windows and quickly pull the nearby lever, then scramble to get out of that death trap and make your way south. Through the boss doors, you'll have to face off with a stray mimic tier. It will drop the flame monk Amon Ashes when defeated. Don't fast travel out of here just yet, instead, grab the death root from the chest then head back out of the boss room.
head down the hallway to the west and ascend using the lift. This will lead you to the useful Spelldrake Talisman Plus 2 and right to the site of Grace for this location. That took a bit of time, but now we can go to the Bestial Sanctum to cash in our death root. If you want to explore all the dialogue from Garonk that is possible, turn in the death roots one at a time. After turning in the fourth death root, Garonk will turn hostile the next time you reload the game. Simply hit him three times and he will surrender. You can then reload the game once more to resume feeding him death roots. You'll get many bestial incantations and the Beast Claw Great Hammer, and most importantly, an ancient dragon smithing stone. After all nine death roots have been turned in, Garonk will vanish, completing his quest and setting you up for some unique dialogue later on. While you're at it, you can return to the Round Table Hold and speak with Gideon, informing him about your various discoveries. This will culminate in the completion of Gideon's quest and obtaining multiple useful spells and rewards, the last of which is the Law of Causality Incantation. At this point, we'll start making our way through the crumbling Faramazula. While moving across the first large span of ruins, you'll be attacked by a dragon. Defeat it to get an ancient dragon smithing stone, then move on to the next site of grace. The next destination is very close, just make sure to grab the Ancient Dragon prayer book along the way. Pick up the Somber Stone Miner's Bell Bearing 4, then make your way down to the Dragon Temple. From there, we will actually be heading to the Dragon Temple Transept, sticking to the sides of the main chamber to avoid triggering the Godskin duo fight. You may need to actually quit to the main menu and then load back in for Bernal's summoning sign to appear, but it should be located right near the Godskin duo boss chamber. I found that with Bernal and a strong spirit summons to help, the Godskin duo is fairly easy to overcome. They will drop the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing 4 and Black Flame Tornado Ash of War when defeated. We will next be making our way to the Dragon Temple Lift Site of Grace. Two Stone Sword Keys will be required to access this lift. Head out the northeast exit of the temple and jump through a window near some rabid dogs. Walk up the spiral staircase near some dragon statues, then continue straight ahead to reach the lift. After discovering the site of grace there, return back down the lift, and instead of going down the spiral staircase, turn to the south and scale a column to reach a secluded area, where an ancient dragon smithing stone is located. 
after grabbing it, return to the Dragon Temple lift. From here, we will make our way to Alexander to complete his quest. Start by traveling out into the south. Turn west once you get near the Earth Tree Sapling, and platform your way over to an isolated area where Alexander should be located. If Alexander's quest bugged out, you may only find a dragon in this area. I've never experienced this, and unfortunately I don't know how to fix it. Assuming you find Alexander, speak through all of his dialogue and then give him the honorable battle he's been chasing after. After defeating and speaking with him, you'll get the Shard of Alexander, an extremely useful talisman, along with the Alexander's Innards key item. This item will allow us to complete another questline, which we will quickly do now. If you haven't already, make your way to the cliffs above the Carrion Study Hall. Near the location marked on the map, you'll find a set of cliffside tombstones that can be platformed down to reach Jarberg. Do not attack any of the jars, they are friendly, and if you do and they become hostile as a result, it can be fixed with absolution. Near the site of Grace there, you'll find a new NPC, the Jar Bairn. This quest will consist of a lot of dialogue and reloading the game. First, go through all of Jar Bairn's dialogue and submit to his potentate test. Then rest at the site of Grace to reload the game. Speak with Jar Bairn once more and he will tell you to pick the rare flowers scattered throughout Jarberg. You don't have to, but you can if you want, and you may also want to take the time to gather the cracked pots and ritual pots located throughout Jarberg. There are two of each. Reload the game and speak with Jar Baron once again, this time about Alexander, whom Jar Baron knew personally. Reload the game again, this time Jar Baron will talk about sinister poachers. The next time you reload the game, Jar Baron will tell you about the arrival of a new potentate, which turns out to be none other than Dialos. You will find him tending to a jar near the north end of Jarberg. Speak through all of his dialogue, then rest at the site of grace. I was doing this during late day and chanced upon a funny interaction with Jar Baron, where he is sleep talking about Yalos. In order to trigger the next phase of this quest, I believe you need to rest at the site of Grace multiple times, and it may need to be late day or night for it to work. So pass time until night, then keep getting up and resting at the site of Grace until you notice that Jar Baron is no longer sitting in his normal spot. Instead, you'll find him standing a short distance away to the northeast. Speak with him, then find Dialos on the ground a bit further ahead. Dialos will ask if he successfully defended the jars. I chose to spare his feelings, but I don't think it matters if you're brutally honest. Either way, Dialos will die, and when you reload the game, Jar Baron will be standing over Dialos' body. Speak with him, then reload the game once more, and Jar Baron will be back in his original spot. First, grab the items dropped by Dialos. You'll get a petal whip, Newman's rune, and Dialos' mask. Afterwards, speak with Jar Baron. At this point, you can give Jar Baron Alexander's innards. Speak through Jar Baron's remaining dialogue, then reload the game and Jar Baron will be gone. In his place, you'll find the companion Jar Talisman. I'm hopeful that we will see future content for Jar Baron, but for Dialos and Alexander, I think we can safely assume that we've reached the end of their stories. Although it wasn't immediately at this point, I did eventually go get a couple items to add some ranged abilities to my toolkit, and I would be remiss not to cover it. To get those items, grab a stone sword key and fast travel to the liftside chamber and limgrave. Make your way out the east doorway and travel south across the courtyard. Near the south corner, there is an areaway leading down to a fog wall. Dispatch the rats and use the stone sword key to open the way. In the next chamber, you'll find a Godslayer seal and the Godskin prayer book. I brought the prayer book to Muriel so that I could learn the Black Flame Incantation, which is basically a nice black fireball spell with decent range. I then bought all of the smithing stones necessary to upgrade the matching seal up to max level at plus 25. This will come in handy later on, at least for me. Okay, no more tangents, return to the Dragon Temple Altar Site of Grace, and retrace your steps along a similar path. This time, however, head down a descending path to the east, just before reaching the spiral staircase. This will eventually get you to the Dragon Temple Rooftop Site of Grace.
The Bloodhound step will be super helpful here as we make our way south past the most annoying enemy type in the game, birds, and to a severely injured dragon. The dragon will drop an ancient dragon smithing stone when defeated. Nearby, a somber ancient dragon smithing stone can be found in a gazebo. Move southwest up a spiral path and mine the gap. In the following building, you can pick up the somber stone miner's bell bearing 5 out from beneath a beast man, then make your way to a lift which will bring you up to the site of grace beside the great bridge. After discovering that site of grace, return down the lift and backtrack out of the temple to find a hidden path leading to a secret location. An important choice is coming up, so you'll want to watch ahead before making any decisions. At the bottom of the path, you'll find a peculiar depression in the ground where you are prompted to lay down. This will transport you to the arena where Dragonlord Placidusax is fought. Mikola's Needle can be used here and only here to subdue the Frenzied Flame if you inherited it. If you want the Lord of Frenzied Flame ending, then do not use Mikola's Needle here. Only use the Needle if you want to avoid the Lord of Frenzied Flame ending, so you can choose one of the other endings instead. Also, if you have not inherited the Frenzied Flame, then you will not be able to use Mikola's Needle in any case. You can use the Needle before or after defeating the Dragon Lord. And if you're still confused about any of this stuff, you can reach out in the comments and I'll do my best to clear it up. About the Dragon Lord boss itself, I don't know if I'd say it's as difficult as Melania, however, it is a huge pain in my opinion, and you can come back to challenge it at any time by taking the hidden path, even after beating the game. There is one other point of warning, if you end up defeating the Dragon Lord, make sure to discover the Site of Grace that appears at the center of the arena before leaving, as I'm not sure you'll be able to get back otherwise. With that all taken care of, fast travel to back beside the Great Bridge to complete Bernal's quest. Run up the staircase and move north along the bridge. You'll eventually arrive at a small bridge with the bodies of beastmen scattered about. Bernal will invade and begin attacking. He isn't too difficult, and defeating him is greatly rewarded. You'll get the Beast Champion Armor Set, Blasphemous Claw, and Devourer Scepter, which is the last of the legendary armaments and should unlock the associated achievement or trophy. The Blasphemous Claw can be used as a sort of parry counter item to specific attacks during the Malekith fight, but I really haven't found it to be worth using. 
continue forward to the next chamber and clear out the beast men waiting in ambush, then open the chest inside. You'll find the Old Lord's Talisman, which is the second to last legendary talisman in the game. Return to the Great Bridge and go southeast to reach Malaketh. You don't have to defeat the Draconic Tree Sentinel before entering the arena, I did however because I didn't want it pulling the attention of my spirit summon from outside of the arena. The Sentinel will drop the Malformed Dragon armor set when defeated. As a final warning, you will lose access to Landel Royal Capital once Malaketh has been defeated. If there was anything in the Royal Capital that you still want to farm for, do it before facing off with Malaketh. In addition, if you wanted to speak with Finger Reader Enya for important or meaningful dialogue, you will need to do so before defeating Malaketh. Once you're ready, step through the fog. The first time you enter the boss room, the beast clergyman will utter a few words of dialogue. If you completed Garong's quest by giving him all nine death roots, then the clergyman will recognize you. But there's really not much else to it than that. I would give tips for this boss, but again, if you could handle Melania, then Malaketh will be surprisingly easy by comparison. The only thing to really watch out for is that burn damage. It can creep up on you if you aren't paying attention. Defeating Malaketh will earn you the Remembrance of the Black Blade and allow you to purchase Malaketh's armor set from Enya at Roundtable Hold. It will also trigger the next major event in the main questline, and it is major. After a cutscene plays out, you'll be transported to a new location, Landell, capital of Ash. First, let's get the final legendary smithing stone. Discover the nearby site of Grace, then travel west until passing over the giant dragon's wing. Climb up into the ramparts and move southeast along them. There is a gargoyle patrolling near the somber ancient dragon smithing stone. You can defeat it if you want, but it only drops runes. Either way, make your way down and through the ash, locating this final legendary smithing stone nearby. Return to the recently discovered grace and head a short distance south to find a new entrance to the subterranean shunning grounds. It will allow you to reach a previously inaccessible area where you can pick up the Crimson Amber Medallion Plus 2, which vastly increases max HP. Once more, return to the previous grace and move south again, this time passing by the entrance to the sewers. If you did not give Corrin the Tonic of Forgetfulness, you'll find him a short distance from the conspicuous curved staircase, which we will be returning to in due time. For now, you can speak with Corrin once more, then reload the game to get his item set and a bell bearing. If you gave Corrin the Tonic, then he will be elsewhere, which we will get to in a moment. Before that, let's go find Goldmask. Travel down the path to the west of the curved staircase. Across a bridge and a short distance south, you should find Goldmask waiting with the Mending Rune of Perfect Order. This Mending Rune will give the option of picking the Age of Order ending for the game. Reload the game and you'll be able to pick up Goldmask's armor set from his body, sans the actual gold mask, which we will go get right now. A short distance southeast of the Road of Iniquity side path, you'll be able to leap to a broken bridge. Practically hanging off the broken bridge is the Radiant Gold Mask.
Now, if Corrin was offered the Tonic of Forgetfulness, you'll find him at his previous location on the snowy bridge near Stargazer's Ruins. Speak with Corrin, then reload the game to get his item set and bell bearing. And that's basically the end of the road for both Corrin and Goldmask. Next up, we'll get the final legendary talisman in the game. Travel to the Forbidden Lands site of Grace, and from there, backtrack into the capital, take the first lift up and head out the west exit, and continue all the way to a second lift which you will need to take down into the capital. After exiting the lift, proceed forward to find a large open field of ash with an ulcerated tree spirit roaming around. The talisman is located on a dead tree at the far southwest end of the field. As you make your way towards it, two additional ulcerated tree spirits will spring out of the ground to attack. They drop nothing more than runes when defeated. If you're like me, you'll do your best to avoid them while Bloodhound stepping to the legendary Urtree's Blessing plus 2 talisman, and failed miserably to escape them, dying in the process. In any case, this is the last legendary talisman and will unlock the associated achievement or trophy. If you want, you can take a moment to return to Round Table Hold. You'll notice that Gideon is gone and Roderica is standing near the round table in the central room. You can speak back and forth between her and Hugh several times to fully resolve each of their stories. You'll know you've gotten through all possible dialogue once Roderica returns to her previous spot near Hugh. There are no major choices or consequences here, just story and context. And now we are finally ready to finish things. Return to the capital of Ash and make your way back to that curved staircase. Ascend it to find Gideon. If you allow it, he will monologue for a moment before beginning his attack. Overall, he's not too difficult and when defeated, he will drop the scepter and armor set of the All-Knowing. From there, ascend the routes to the northeast and retread the familiar path to the Queen's Bedchamber. This time, you'll find the Ur Tree Heal incantation on the bed, which is the most potent healing spell in the game. Moving on, there is a gold summoning sign just outside of the Elden Throne. Because we completed Nefeli's quest, she will help us in the fight against her father, Godfrey, aka Horalu. Previously, I have had difficulty with this boss. This time around though, I found it surprisingly easy, especially with Nefeli's help. After defeating him, make sure to spend the runes you earn on leveling up, then enter the Urtree for the final encounter. If you want to go into this fight blind, then pause the video now to avoid spoilers, otherwise I'll briefly discuss the strategies that I used. You'll have to defeat two bosses in a row. The first is Radagon, followed closely behind by the Elden Beast. My only recommendations would be to use Golden Vow and especially the Lord's Divine Fortification if you can. Both will help to greatly reduce damage taken from Radagon and the Elden Beast. I also brought both the Black Flame and Pest Threads incantations. Black Flame does great damage against Radagon, and the Pest Threads are pretty strong against the Elden Beast. Black Knife Tish is also capable of dealing massive damage to both bosses. Defeating the Elden Beast is rewarded with the Elden Remembrance. There is also a very important decision coming up, so you'll want to wait to hear this explanation before proceeding. You'll appear on the stone platform near a new site of grace, which you should discover. Now, there are two possibilities. The first is if you inherited the Frenzied Flame and did not subdue it with Mikola's Needle. In that case, the only option you will have when approaching the Fractured Merica is to become the Lord of Frenzied Flame. This will unlock the Lord of Frenzied Flame achievement or trophy. On the other hand, if you did not inherit the Frenzied Flame, or if you inherited and subdued the Frenzied Flame with Mikola's Needle, then you will not have that option. Instead, you will have several other options. Be careful here, if you interact with the blue summoning sign, which says Summon Ronnie, it won't even ask you to confirm. 
it will immediately go to the age of the star's ending, unlocking the associated achievement or trophy. Alternatively, if you approach the Fractured Marika, you'll get the standard option to mend the Elden Ring, or use one of the Mending Runes, the Perfect Order from Gold Mask, Death Prince from Fia, or Fell Curse from Dung Eater. All three are variations on the standard ending of the game and will unlock the Elden Lord achievement or trophy. If you aren't ready to decide, you can always return to this location by fast traveling to the Site of Grace. However, once you pick an ending, it is final and it cannot be reversed. After the credits roll, you won't be able to return to this area and choose a different ending. If you want to get all three game endings from a single character, you will need to utilize cloud backups. I have never done this and do not feel comfortable explaining it. In addition, if you do it incorrectly, you could wind up erasing your save data. Personally, I got the multiple endings through the tried and true method by beating the game multiple times. With all that said, once you've picked an ending and seen the credits roll, you'll be asked if you want to begin a new journey. I would suggest clicking no for now as you can always begin your new journey at Roundtable Hold once you've gotten everything out of the current journey. Speaking of which, there are some very important tasks that you'll want to complete before starting your next journey, also known as New Game Plus. However, that will be a topic of a bonus part 9 in this series. In the meantime, feel free to scour the lands between, which you can do without the worry of missing any quests or missable content. If you followed this series to a T up to this point, then you've completed every major quest and NPC interaction in the game, defeated all invaders, collected every legendary spell, armament, talisman, and smithing stone, and have the ability to purchase every level of smithing stone and ghost glove ward from the twin maiden husks. If you need help with anything covered in this video, you can reach out in the comment section, where I'll do my best to help. I'll also have a pinned comment that I update with helpful information as time goes on. Again, in part 9, we'll be covering all the things that you'll want to do before going on to New Game Plus. You can find that over on my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat, her name's Marshmallow. There are other ways you can support the channel too. The Marshmallow merch store features professional Elden Ring inspired designs of your favorite fluffball, and we also have a channel membership now. By pledging $3 a month, you'll get a custom badge that upgrades over time to let others know you're an MVP, along with priority responses to comments and questions. That's my spiel, have a great day if you're here today, have a great Monday, and a great week, and as always, thanks for watching.